But if we were to graph these functions, it's useful to think about what they might look like. So I'm going to graph on the vertical axis y, uh, on the horizontal axis I'll graph theta, and I'll do this in degrees just to make it easy on ourselves. This might be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360. This will be minus 90 degrees. So the sine function starts out at zero but grows larger it does something like this and at 180 degrees the sine function goes to zero again at 270 degrees it actually equals negative 1 because the opposite side is pointing straight down and at 360 degrees it's back up to 0 again remember it's made one full revolution at minus 90 degrees and down here at minus 1 so that might be a graph of sine and theta Cosine of theta is the exact opposite. It starts out at 1. At 90, it goes to 0. At 180, it equals minus 1. At 270, it's back to 0. And at 360, it's back up to plus 1. So these two graphs look very similar to one another. They've just shifted over. The tangent is a little funny. The tangent is sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So it starts out at zero. It's one right here. And it just keeps on going up. So at 90 degrees, it's infinitely big. At 91 degrees, the sign of it if theta is still pretty close to 1, the cosine is very, very small, but it's a negative number because the, I'm over in the second, what's called the second quadrant, and the graph looks something like that. And I have these dramatic arcs that look like so. So the, sine, the tangent of x, or tangent of theta, is constantly going between minus infinity and plus infinity. And it goes through 0 at multiples of 180 degrees, 0, 180, 360, and so on.